الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد a comment was made and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى guide us and guide them and forgive us and forgive them I mean يا رب العالمين Allah did not say He rose above His throne you and your like said that if you said, as Allah said, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَىٰ عَرْشِ Without a manner of being, we don't have a problem. But you took out a word from your weak mind and said rose. Who said that istoa means rose? What Arab linguist? And don't quote an ignorant Wahhabi. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad وَلَا عَلِي وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمَا بَعْدْ أَحَبْتِ فِي اللَّهِ There is immense benefits from a comment such as this. Regardless of how wrong, but it shows us how many of our Muslim brothers and sisters بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ are ignorant of the Arabic language and ignorant of the Qur'an and ignorant of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and ignorant of the sabil sabil al-mu'mineen the path of the believers and ignorant of the salaf al-salih ridwan allahi alayhim in their mawqif and mawaqif of ahl sunnati with jama'ah in their various positions with regards to issues of aqeedah and fiqh and other than that from the sciences of Islam so he said that Allah did not say he rose above his throne so I'm not sure how they would like us to translate it but we will try our best to be concise and deal with the issue because Allah himself subhanahu wa ta'ala said fi surat al-a'raf قوله إن ربكم الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة الأعراف Verily your Lord is Allah, the one who created the heavens and earth in six days. Then استوى على العرش. Then he rose above his throne. And we're going to get to that meaning and where we come up with the word with shortly. And then Allah said, I didn't say it, Fi suratu Yunus, Inna rabbukum Allah ladhi khalaqa samawati wal arfi sitta di ayam thumma stawa ala arsh. And this is uh, the same meaning. Verily your Lord is Allah, the one who rose above the, the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days then rose above his throne and then Allah said also in the Quran fi suratul ra'd Allah ladhi rafa samawati bi ghayri amadin taruna ha thumma stawa ala arsh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in suratul ra'd Allah is the one who raised the heavens without pillars that you can see then he rose above his arsh above his throne Fi suratul taha Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa The most merciful rose above his throne Fi suratul furqan Thumma istawa ala arsh Ar-Rahman Allah says Then he rose above his throne Ar-Rahman The most merciful The most merciful rose above his throne Fi suratul alif lamim as-sajda Allah ladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard wa ma baynahuma fi sittati fi sittati ayyam thumma istawa ala arsh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and Allah is the one who created the heavens and earth and what is between them in six days then he rose above his throne and in surah al-hadid huwa ladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard fi sittati ayyam thumma istawa ala arsh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid 
uh, he is the one who created the heavens and earth in six days then he rose above his throne Allah said this about himself and in the son of the messenger of Allah salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi he said والعرش فوق الماء والله فوق العرش وهو يعلم ما أنتم عليه and this is أخرجه أبو داود وقال الشيخ الإسلام حديث حسن so this is an uh, uh, حسن حديث in uh, أبو دا uh, سنة نبي داود where uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and the Arsh the throne it is above the water and Allah is above the throne folk the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the left folk which means to be on top of something and he knows what you're upon and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith this was, he said this to the uh, slave girl, to the Jariya, the hadith, Maruf bi Haditha Jariya. Ain Allah, the Prophet وسلم, asked her, Ain Allah, qalat fi sama. She said, above the heaven. So fi here, fi means in, in the Arabic language. It also and this is when we get back to the language, also has the meaning to be above as well. Fi sama. Qal man ana. And then he said, and who am I? Qalat anta rasulillah. She said, you are the messenger of Allah. Qala itti'ka fa innaha mu'mina. The Prophet ﷺ ordered, free her, for verily she's a believer. All of that should be sufficient for us. But let's get back to the language so that our friends will hopefully have something to jar his intellect. So, estoa in the Arabic language, it comes mutlaq wa muqayyid. And we're not going to get too deep into some of these terms, but we're going to try to keep it as concise as possible. Mutlaq meaning the general meaning. And this is not in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, in the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walamma balaga ashad, So, and then also in the example in the Arabic language again, Estowa nabat wa estowa ta'am. This means that the, uh, the, the, the plant is uh, ripe or completed and the food is ready. Temma, it's complete. So this is one meaning for stoa in the Arabic language. The second meaning, and it has several examples and they come from ayat as well. And this is the muqayyid, the specific meaning, meaning which has to do with what we're discussing. One of the meanings is it has to do with when it is muqayyid meaning it's restricted the word is still is restricted with ila the harf ila which means to you know do means to <coughs> so for example the habtu ila gurfa means i went to the room the habtu ila gurfa i went to the room so here when we use this term or as it is used in the quran by allah the creator of the heavens and earth, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the one who created all of you. And he said, Jami'an. And this is uh, Nekira. So it's letting us know that this Jami'an means without exception. Allah created all of us. Then he rose. Uh, he rolls over the heavens. And then Allah says also, Thumma istawa ila samai wa hiya dukhan. Allah also mentions that he rolls 
to the heavens and it is Dukhan. Notice Ahlul Sunnah does not go into the kafir. We don't deal with how. We don't say, oh, that means you're saying Allah is in a place. Or that means you said Allah was below and then he went. No, we just say Allah rose. And we know the meaning of rose in the Arabic language. We know the meaning of istoa in the Arabic language. We can't come with a new meaning. But let's finish this uh, discussion. So in those two verses we mentioned, the meaning is alu wa irtifa bi ijma as salaf. So if you reject the salaf, then there's nothing we can even discuss. Alu, meaning uh, to rise or being above something. Irtifa, meaning to rise. <clears throat> and this is in accordance with the Arabic language and also as uh, a as a, uh, uh, um, from the Mustalahat Diniya, it's from a uh, linguistic perspective, or there's the linguistic perspective, and then there's the religious perspective, and this is with the Salaf, that it mean, has these two meanings. We didn't bring up a third. The next way, it's Muqayyid with Ala, and this means that the Harf Ala, which means to be on something. For example, we could say Al-Kitab ala Maktab. This book, or the book, is on this desk. Ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Li tistawu ala dhuhuri. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa istawait ala judi. So these are various meanings, and the meaning is the same. And this is from the people of uh, the people of linguistics, the Arabic linguists. It's nothing to do with Wahhabi, Salafi, anything else that you want to uh, make claims against Ahl Sunnah. The meaning is what Al Ma'ana, Alu, Wa Irtifa, Wa Irtidal. This is by the consensus of the people of, uh, of the Arabic language. Again, linguist. Check it yourself. The third meaning is when uh, the, the, the word ma, which means uh, with, is used. And this is has to do Again, from the kalam of the Arab, this is from the speech of the Arab. وَهَذِهِ مَعَانِي إِسْتَوَى مَعْكُولَ فِي كَلَامِهِمْ This is something which is comprehensible from their kalam. Who? The linguist. Because it's understood, we, we understand the Arabic language, how the Arabs understood it meaning we don't give it a new meaning we don't say well this is 2016 I'm from uh, you know I'm, I'm a non-Arab speaker and I'm not a native speaker so I think I'm gonna give it uh, you know it feels more comfortable to translate like this or to give it this meaning no we stop by the wada how the Arabs used it and this you'll find in the and the gram, grammarian books the Nahu books go back and look The people who deny this are the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila and the Ashaira, and they have different levels of deviance with regards to this. But let's look to some of the statements of the Salaf so that our hearts can be a bit more comfortable. Qala ibn Ibn Arabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, not to be mixed with the Ibn Arabi that uh, is known to the Sufis. In Ibn Abi Dawood a Jahmi. So there was a Jahmi named Ibn Abi Dawood. Sa'alani, he asked me, Ata'arafi loga istawa bi ma'na istawla? Faqalat, la arafu. Faqalat, la arafu. Tayyip. So Ibn Abi Dawood, who was a Jahmi from the Jahmiya, he asked him, he said, do you know from the language, meaning what language, the Arabic language, 
uh, istoa bimana istola. You know, istoa, the, all those ayats that we mentioned, which means to raise in irtifa and ulu, as we mentioned, to mean have the meaning of istola. This is what the Ashari say. Meaning, which means to like take by force or to overcome something. He says, I don't have any idea about this. Meaning, it's not mentioned in the Arabic language. It's not known to us. Qala Abu Suleiman Dawood ibn Ali Kunna inda ibn Arabi Fa'atahu raju Fa'ala lahu ma ma'na qawlu qawlu Allahi ta'ala Azza wa Jal Ar-Rahman ala Ars Istawa So uh, Abu Suleiman Dawood ibn Ali He was with uh, Ibn uh, Arabi And then a man came to them And he said What's the meaning of this verse? Ar-Rahman ala Ars Istawa The most merciful rose above his throne What's the meaning of this? He said Fa'al Huwa ala Arshi this is beautiful. This should end our discussion. He said, He is huwa ala arshihi. He is over his throne as he mentioned to us. Why do you ask how? Why do you bring up the issue of makan, of place to place, and restricting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this and opening this bab up? This is from your intellect. But Ahl Sunnah does not say this. Ahl Sunnah, we stop with the Nasus. And we're going to end, we're going to mention that, we mention why, in a beautiful ethic of the Salaf, which should hopefully end their discussion. Fakala, Ya Aba Abdullah, Laysa Hadha Ma'anahu, Inna Ma Ma'anahu Istola. So this Jahmi then argued. He said, No. He said, Oh, father of Abdullah, this is not the meaning of that. Verily, its meaning is istola, means, you know, to take by force, or however the ta'wil they try to make it. Then he, he was silent. Qala askut, or he, he, he told him, he ordered, he said, shut up, be quiet. Ma anta wahada, la yaqal istola ala arsh, illa an yakun luhu mubad. Fi idha ghalaba ahaduhuma qil istola. Emma Samerta Nabiga, and then he brings some poetry. The point being, he mentions in his rebuttal, he tells him to be silent, shut up. He said, You know, what are you bringing? What is this? He said, We don't say that istola ala ala shay. We don't say istola ala shay. This is from the linguistic of the Arabic language. Arabic language. We don't say istola ala shay unless. That there's something which is the opposite to it in the in the language, or, or that you're something contradicting, something that is uh, in opposition to, it. and then one of them overtakes the other. So how can the Ashadis interpret istola to mean istoa? It doesn't come in the Arabic language like that, and it has a it's ta'wil fasid. It's a wicked. Interpretation. Not only is it battle from the asl, it doesn't come in the Arabic language, estola or estoa meaning the same. Secondly, this is the second point, is it has an evil meaning and evil interpretation that you say Allah took something by force. That means something was able to even resist or something was on equal terms with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything and everything. He is, he is over everything. And He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has power over everything. And then, Khalil ibn Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, Hal wajetu fi loga istawa bi ma'na istawla? So, uh, Khalil ibn Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, was asked, Have you found uh, in the Arabic language that istoa and istola uh, they have the same meaning فقال هذا ما تعرفه هو العرب ولا هو جائز في لغتها he said this is not known to the Arab we're talking about Arab again Arab, it's Arabic language right? and I'm assuming that you're from Ethiopia because you're defending Jamaat al-Ahbash learn Arabic and learn it from the Arabs Learning from the books of the Arabs. 
Hadhalai la ta'raf huwa la Arab. The Arabs don't know this. They don't know this. So this is some new bid'ah. Wala huwa jayaz. And it's not permissible. Meaning you've went against the qawa'id al You've went against the linguistic uh, uh, usage. He said, Wala huwa jayaz fi logatiha. It is not permissible in the Arabic language. And there's, again, so much. Qala bayan ibn Ahmed, kunna inda ka'nabi. فَسَمِيَ الرَّجَلٍ مِنَ الْجَحْمِيَ يَقُوْ الرَّحْمَانَ الْعَرْشِ إِسْتَوَى إِسْتَوْلَى So again, the Jahmiyyah, as he mentioned, there was a man from the Jahmiyyah. They were, they were with uh, Ka'nabi, and they heard a man from the Jahmiyyah mention about الرحمن على عرش إستوى, saying that it means إِسْتَوْلَى. So again, this is tahrif. This is a changing of the Arabic word in meaning, and it's a changing in the... Arabic word, word in its letters, estowa wa estola, they resemble one another. But one has a lamb, estola, and one doesn't have the lamb, estowa. And there are also, uh, so this is a changing of the Arabic language. And I'm going to end with one last point, which is addressing what the individual mentioned. Imam Malik was teaching in the Haram. He was teaching in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid and he said, he was asked while he was teaching, Ya Aba Abdullah, Ma ma'na ar-Rahman al arsh So a man from amongst the, who later became from the leaders of the Mu'tazila, Ahl al-Tizad, he asked, he said, Oh Abu Abdullah, what uh, is the meaning? Or, or no, he asked Cave. Cave is stoa. He asked Cave is stoa. He said, how did Allah uh, raise, you know, above his throne? A stoa. A stoa, as we said, it means irtifa, it means ala. How? He asked this about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Malik began to sweat. And he said, Al Kaif Al Istoa Malum Wa Kaif Majhu Wa Suel Anhu Bida Wa Emta Mubtedia. He said, The raising Istoa is Malum, it's known, meaning it's known in the Arabic language, and it's known that it means to be above something, to rise above something. That's known. There's no mystery there. What cave majhu? The how is unknown. And asking about it, inquiring about it, is a bid'ah. So therefore, you are a mubtadi'ah. Get out. Get out of my circle. This is how the imam, a imma, this is imam malik. One of the, the, the a imma of the arba madahib that Ahl sunnah has agreeance. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed. And this was all of their aqidah. And a point I want to mention that Shaykh al-Islam mentioned with regards to this. He said he didn't say a cave ma'dum. Very important. He did not say that cave, the how, did not exist. He said it was later, it was majhul. Meaning he did, we don't know how Allah raises above his throne. He does it in a manner that suits his majesty. Just accept that and leave it. Don't go into those issues. He did not say ma'dum like the Jahmiyyah say because they negate it. Ma'dum meaning that it has no existence. And this is what this person said. Let's go back to his statement. What did he say? He said, without a manner of being. How can you say this about Allah? Without a manner of being. Ma'dum. Meaning, no, he doesn't exist. Meaning, no, he actually doesn't do it. He doesn't exist. Wa'iyadun billah. That is the most ibtal al-batil. And that is kufr. In tabi. Maybe you have the excuse of ignorance. I don't know if you're a student or who are you. But, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. He didn't say ma'dun. He didn't say non-existent. He didn't say kaif is non-existent. Meaning, Allah just has no existence. Because when you, when you just say ar-Rahman, 
do we know that and as a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most merciful. And then you say, Ma'dum is his sifat, meaning his, his sifat, the how or his actual characteristic does not exist. When you describe something that doesn't exist, that means it does not exist. So I hope the logic is clear. May Allah forgive us. May Allah guide us. May Allah protect us from kufr, shirk, nifaq, zanbaka, and bid'ah. And may Allah bless us with ilm al nafi, rizq and tayyib, or amal al Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.